Okay, hello everyone. Today we'll be making this uh, animation of this pathetic wizard who pumps out bubbles instead of fireballs. So we'll be making this in 3ds Max and Typhlo and um, I'll show you the logic and how to do it in um, 3ds Max. So let's get into the scene. We'll create a tie icon in, uh, in the helper tab there. Uh, pop in a tie icon. Um, and I'll have it as a circle. Um, I'll also will be zeroing it out so that it's in the center of the scene. Um, <clears throat> I'll rotate it such that um, it's pointing the way that I want it to be and yeah it doesn't really matter if it's um, upside down um, and then I'll be creating a tie flow um, so in this video we got this um, human animation this man animation um, I didn't make that um, I I'll show you where to get him. It's it's pretty easy. It's just a FBX that's got import into the, the scene. Um, so in this um, type flow, we'll be getting this open editor. So essentially what we want is to spawn a bunch of particles from this type icon and have it flows that way along that arrow and have some kind of gravity or force that that lifts these bubbles up and scatter them everywhere and then they disappeared after a period of time so um, with that in mind we'll be adding a birth and a position icon um, to um, reference that tie icon there uh, I'll be picking that tie icon and as you can see there's a bunch of particles spawning right on top of that icon so I don't want that many particles um, within our scene I'll reduce it down to 10 um, we'll be creating um, a bunch of that um, so these are the particles that spawn and as you can see it's stuck on tie icon surfaces um, spawns and it stays there um, what we want to do is to add a speed operator and right away you can see that these um, particles are already coming out of this tie icon and like popping out everywhere what we want is for it to go that direction um, so to do that I'll be changing that from random 3d to a long icon arrow and I'll pick the icon and right away you can see that these particles are popping out I'll be changing this into tick so it's easier to see um, so just right there got a bunch of particles spawning everywhere on the surface of the icon um, and going into one direction um, so in this uh, video clip you can see that this guy is actually popping all these bubbles out from kind of like one linear point and then after a while it it goes up and everywhere and then starting to disappear um, so to do that um, we can either reduce the the icon size um, it's relatively small right now so I don't want to um, scale it any smaller uh, what I can do is to just um, have the 
have the uh, particle spawn right in at the center of the icon and I do that by going to position icon um, location uh, change that to pivot and now it's like a machine gun popping right from one point out to another um, so the logic behind um, doing um, a straight line and then like scattered everywhere like this uh, um, in my video is that I create some kind of a, a box and um, create a surface test so that after these bubble passes the surface of the of the box um, the force starting to um, apply to them therefore they change directions everywhere um, alternatively you can um, do a time test where um, these bubbles would travel a certain way um, long after a period of time then they they're scattered everywhere so it's basically the same concept but, uh, but I prefer using the um, the service test and you'll see why in a, in a minute um, so I'll be creating a surface test um, on top of this surface, surface test um, drag that down and I need to draw a surface um, so I'll be drawing a box um, that cover kind of cover the the tie icon um, that I have here um, not too big um, because I, I want to have a bit of easier control over it um, I'll make this box uh, unrendable um, or I'll just press Alt X uh, oh no, I'll, I'll, I'll change it for now so that I don't have to worry about it in the render process so I'll right click go to object properties um, untick renderable and I'll also make this as a display as a box so that we have it see through yes and I'll apply a force any force um, essentially what we want is these these uh, particles after leaving this box it gets like a goes into a zero gravity zone kind of like that um, so um, I'll, I was lessen the gravity here have a bit of variation um, in here with a bit of other turbulence apparent we can play with that later um, but I'll connect that to that and I guess I'll change this color to like yellow and then I'll pick the um, in the ooh, in the surface test I'll pick the box so as you can see right away I'll probably reduce the strength of that and to make this one more relevant yeah uh, also this one just a little bit um, because you can see once the the the, the particle is a green tick here but once it leave one it leave once it leave the the box is essentially turned yellow um, go to this view it's easier to see um, so it's kind of get determined by this bounding box right here so if I were to um, extend this box um, a bit longer you can see that it it kind of restrict the movement of, of the of these particles uh, I'll also give it a shape operator so that we can start to create our shape and have it as 3D um, I have it as a mid rest sphere right now uh, I display these as geometry 
and that is geometry for now then I'll also increase the scale of this since it's really small right now so we, we can probably bump it up to a thousand or something yeah that looks pretty good um, arguably we can make it a bit larger say 300 I'll bump that up to give it a bit of variation and um, to this I'll probably move it back a little bit so that's like uh, he pushes out two to three bubbles and they're starting to flow out up and out of this um, world um, I'll create a little bit of uh, perlin strength here probably point four or something just just a little bit so make it like scatter in the um, x and y axis uh, and probably do that to, to make it a bit wilder increase that yeah you, you can essentially just play with this all day and then uh, until you're satisfied i'll leave it as it is for now um uh and to me it's it seems like it's moving really quick um so i'll just apply a slow operator so that it um, it's kind of more consistent i guess and then i can create a bit of variation in the um and the slowness of it so some of it might go slow some of it might go faster I have it like 60% or something Ooh, that, that might be a bit too much Ooh. Uh, we reduce that to 2 um, yeah that looks pretty nice um, I kind of like the effect where these kind of bump into each other we can um, mesh them together, create you know those sort of uh, double bubbles that happens in nature. Um, so in the video, you can see that these bubble kind of disappear after a little while. Um, you can uh, apply like a disintegration like tide flow on top of this, but. I think it's too much for this exercise so I'll just simply delete it after a little while you can use either uh, a surface test or a time test uh, like uh, like before but I, I like to use the surface test here um, that way I could like control the environment um, that, like um, when when these are popping out um, I don't yeah don't want to particularly uh, play with that uh, play with time much uh, with that I'll, I'll just quickly set up a camera view uh, as I, I'll, I'll look at, at it at this point um, I'll create a camera probably a view ray camera um, just drag camera anywhere and then control C um, that way, got a camera there, and then I'll make a, I'll probably make a sphere. So what this sphere does is that, it, uh, what I want to do here with the surface test of this sphere is that, um, after a little while, when the, when the bubble um, hit the, the surface of the sphere it will get deleted um, this way it kind of help you in uh, creating uh, wait, let me extend the sphere a little bit so it doesn't uh, so all, all we need to do worry is um, about the height of this 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 whole scene and um, so if I go into the camera view, yeah, that looks all right. Um, so once these, uh, I'll make this kind of transparent and yeah, I'll just make it uh, like the, the other box as well. Uh, 
have it um, unrendable and display as a box. So once these um, sphere essentially touch the surface of the outer sphere, they'll go delete. Um, to do that, we'll we we'll just have a delete uh, operator and connect that to that and pick the surface as the big sphere. Um, if it picks that, yep. And have that as outside as well. So, what happens now is this goes doo -doo 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 and once it touch, as you can see right there, the bubble just gone. Um, I can uh, make this sphere smaller and then you can see the effect of it uh, a bit more dramatic. Yeah, so once it touch, it's gone. Um, so that's in essentially what we need to do in um, Typeflow. Um, so let's uh, get out here. Uh, oh wait, uh, we need to now to render this. We'll need to add a um, mesh. Um, we'll untick the render only, and then just copy it across all, all of these um, so that it kind of get baked out. Um, and yeah, now we're done with uh, uh, doing uh, setup in Typeflow. We'll go out and um, apply a bit of uh, meshing into uh, these uh, bubbles. And to do that, um, I'll go into Typeflow in the standard pr primitive and add a time measure. Um, I'll pop it right there, right there, and I'm going to modify. I'll pick the tie flow object. As as you can see, it's starting to create a mesh in here. Um, what we want to do is to um, have this as a block mesh right here block mesh and we can then increase the radius size of this um, I'll, I'll keep having the tie flow thingy uh, right now to, to see the the, the effect of this uh, block mesh I'll essentially just want it to um, kind of cover the, the tie flow object um, you can play with this to make it like uh, more accurate so it's it's like the more um, the more voxel si uh, the, the smaller your voxel size the the more accurate these um, these uh, sphere will look like but it's more intensive so if you look in here yeah that's that's a lot of uh, polygons right there um, but yeah, that, that looks about right to me. Um, I can... Uh, I can... Arguably... Uh, do a voxel filtering, uh, Gaussian, to make it more smoother. Um, yeah, I can probably increase the size a little bit more. And play a bit more with uh, voxel size um, and there you, as you can see it's kind of meshed these two bubbles together making it um, making it like uh, connected um, so at this point I can um, probably hide the type flow and uh, the type icon um, and now we have this scene. Um, we'll uh, to have to have like all the bubble like disappeared over time. I'll just increase the the timeline a little bit, like one eighty, for example, so that we can have them um, disappeared over time. 
um, within this sphere I can create a little bit of um, a small environment uh, say I'll pop a sun in there a bit of HDRI um, with a really small um, inten intensity uh, then uh, to set up the render view I'll go to exposure control and kind of uh, change that to V-Ray exposure control um, if you have V-Ray uh, asset browser uh, usually comes with the uh, later version of V-Ray you can have these pre-made uh, materials um, I would apply a kind of like a liquid uh, probably alcohol um, add that to the scene and uh, take the tie measure and apply that to um, the tie measure um, have it as performance to easier see the, the the objects and to create the the guy I go to this page called mix maximal you can um, create an account here it's free and then um, uh, type in and find uh, the animation you like uh, say uh, this guy's like healing Kind of like the same kind of effect you can easily download it uh, choose as a fbx binary uh, you can change um, the frame rate and whatnot um, i've already downloaded uh, a version of this so i'll just straight up um, import uh, this into the the file um, so i'll just Whoops, go import um, and have that. No, the, the binary one and just press OK. It'll come in slightly smaller, I, I think, because of the scale of uh, this project. So I'll just uh, yeah make sure everything is in there and then I'll just uh, scale it um, so that it kind of fits with the scene um, I'll check on the, the, the left side so that uh, I don't make this uh, way too weird uh, since that's coming out there I'll have this guy standing here so the uh, so the guy's starting to pump out at around 30 37 um, we can control this in the um, typhoid um, to have it burst from 37 to 100 so that um, it will burst like that many particles there so what what happens now is that um, once he have his hand at the front um, we'll have these particles starting to pop out maybe that's a bit too late um, I'll also move him back a little bit since the particles essentially start kind of like right there um, probably a bit lower as well oh uh, no I'll, I'll leave him there I'll bring the tie flow down I mean up so the tie mesh will will uh, kind of follow that so I'm, I'm not too fussed about it um, yeah. 
And yeah, um, I'll show you how to set up the render so it, it, it renders pretty quickly uh, despite having so much stuff going on. I also put a V-Ray plane, uh, so that's kind of like an infinite plane. Move it down um, to his leg, whatnot. Um, move this down a tad bit. Um, the lights in there. Um, so if you go into render setup, Um, since this is only a test kind of like uh, environment, I'll go into GI and change this to Irradiance Map. Um, I'll change this to Low so that you don't, I don't have to like uh, recalculate so much of the um, sort of the, of the light cache. Um, also bump this down to 800, I'm making it sort of like, and change that to Bucket. Um, and say have just eight subdivision instead of 24 it's just less stress uh, if you're doing like a test render or something um, and don't have much time um, size I'll keep it as it is for now just small and I'll have it as the active time segment also um, specify a folder um, yeah, for the sake of this exercise, I'll, I'll also do do a save, um, save it somewhere. Say Bubble Man Two. Bubble Man Two. And yeah, whatever name you convention you have, I usually save it as a PNG so that if um, uh, some of the um, empty spaces could turn into you know transparent um I'll save it 84 bits yeah that that sounds fair and yeah and then i'll press render um this is our first render so essentially i just want to check if the lighting is working um it's pretty dark right here um so I'll probably create a um, just say a plane of sun a uh, plane of light right on top of him um, and um, have it invisible uh, let's redo this render I'll override that see how it goes yeah, that's much better, um, but I don't like the way the plane is being that green, it's kind of distracting, so I'll just assign this um, default material on top of it, uh, also onto the background as well, so it doesn't show up as red. Uh, if I can find that, yep. Yes. Yeah, that's much better. Yeah, you can um, you can play with the render settings um, if you want. But yeah, this is a really low res, um, quick uh, render. So as you can see, uh, it goes by really quick. Uh, I'll stop it right here because I've got already got a um, a sequence uh, already made. Um, to save time for this tutorial it's already pretty long um, so it comes out like this um, I play with the uh, settings a little bit um, so essentially it's a sequence like that and then what you can do is you pop into Premiere um, import import it as a you, uh, you double click into like that space have that and like tick that image sequence and then it'll import as a quick se uh, a sequence for you and yeah that that thing is like seven seconds long so you can see goes like that and then i'll just add sound effects so that it matches the the, the motion of the guy and then 
um, export it and this is the result uh, we do that so yeah that's uh, that's it for this tutorial I'll see you next time thank you bye